It's good to see Wahida again. Yes, She's a lovely is. lady yes, and a good is. group of people. And in the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Uh, and for those of you who may be familiar with our conversations, you'll remember our program with Wahida Clark, a publisher of uh, thugs and the women who love them and other kinds of genre pieces that have taken off really in a big time way in our society. And she had given me uh, information about a book that they were publishing about a man named Uncle Yaya. And we have here on the program Robert Pearson. And Robert Pearson is uh, the, the representative of, uh, well, let's just say, a representative of Uncle Yaya and a subtitle, The 21st Century Man of Wisdom. We have the book displayed here on the, uh, on the stand uh, by Al Dickens, and he's a representative of all of this. And Robert, welcome very, very much mm -hmm. to Conversations. You're in good company with Wahida Clark. Yes, I and am, company. and thank you for having me. My great good pleasure. Could you share your background? Born and raised, educated a little bit. Then we want to get into a discussion, particularly of this book, okay. and then other condition, other parts of the human condition that are relevant. Right? Yes, no problem. Where you born and raised, educated? Well, I was born uh, April 8, 1960, in Concord, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, geographically, is uh, next to Charlotte and Kannapolis, which are uh, better known uh, metropolises. I stayed there for uh, three years of my life. My family migrated north to Newark, New Jersey mm -hmm. in 1963. Mm -hmm. I'm a product of the Newark uh, public education system. Mm -hmm. I attended uh, the basic grade schools, uh, 8th Street School, 13th Street. I attended uh, Newark Tech uh, Technical High School. Mm -hmm. And at the age of 17, I dropped out. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way I can describe it is that uh, the precociousness and immaturity of youth. Uh, that seems to have been there for a very long time in terms of the longer history of humanity. Yes, it has. That's yes, a it difficult has. time. Yes, it has. On both sides of the sexual uh, equation as well, right. too. And uh, it was at the uh, tender age of 18 that I was sentenced to 30 years uh, of prison time in the penitentiary mm -hmm. for uh, armed robbery and homicide. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was in this particular setting, mm -hmm. this uh, gladiator school, uh, the snake pit as it is called, mm -hmm. that I was blessed beyond mm -hmm. words to meet uh, Mr. Al Dickens, the author of Uncle Yaya. Okay, and you had to spend something like 10 years within the prison system of New Jersey? or uh, 12 years. 12 years, yes. right? And it was for, uh, it wasn't like you were framed or something, you were, you were, you were uh, guilty I was of guilty charge, charge, and so yes. you'd robbed somebody or something? Yes, guilty And there was a charge. homicide involved? A homicide, yes. Uh -huh. And so that brought you into the prison system within New Jersey? Yes, Was it all prison. within New Jersey? Or it was all serve? within New Jersey. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, you were 18? Yes, 18. I had just turned 18. Uh, your experience, I understand, something, if I'm not mistaken, something like... Uh, we got two and a half million people in prisons in yes. the United States now, and I understand it's one of our real growth industries. Yes, it is. It Private is. prisons. Are yes, it is. Down those uh, matter seats. of fact, the United States uh, Corporation of America, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Paul Anker, the noted singer, is yeah. one of the prime uh, stockholders in. Uh, uh, it, it is a saying, philosophically speaking, that you can tell how civilized a nation is by the amount of prisons it has. In America, not barring China or Russia, has more prisons than any uh, nation on the planet. They have more prisons, more yes. prisons yes. and prisoners. prisoners. Yes, they do. Than any other nation in any the world. Any other nation. Yes. Is that a lot of that drug related? Well, or do you are you familiar with the breakdown on what? Well, today uh, they state that the majority of the the nonviolent crimes and the violent crimes uh -huh. are based upon some type of uh, drug transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, it. It factors prominently uh, the particular numbers and percentages mm -hmm. I'm not aware of, but mm -hmm. it does factor prominently in the prison population and those with behind his walls. Uh, I've been involved with a lot of people that are doing uh, Cornelius Ricks and his lawyer and that kind of thing, and they've been looking at these kind of situations and everything. And as I understand it, uh, from what I understand, we'll get to your, your own personal okay. story, which we want to do. But it costs something, uh, the taxpayers of, uh, what, the state and the country, I guess. Yes, it does. Uh, something like $60,000 a year to send somebody to prison. Yes. You could send somebody to Harvard. Yes, you could. For that, with all room and board 
thrown in Absolutely. and everything. You could do that. So it, it's really a big thing, uh, a, a big part, and it's growing. Yes, it is. Uh huh. Um, so you must have been brought up short when the term of uh, your term was originally what thirty years? Thirty years. Yes, I was facing. Uh, originally, the uh, indictment stated that I was facing one hundred and five years, but they were not able to prove the other charges. But they were able to make those charges that uh, required a thirty-year prison sentence stick. Uh huh. You don't. Do you want to recount what happened in terms of what brought you to that unhappy past and so forth? Was well. It was it a fist fight that got out of hand? Well, no. Uh, I don't mean to pry. Right, I, I understand. Yeah. But uh, this is good for our youth. Okay. Uh, at the age of 15, uh -huh. I was having shootouts, actual shootouts uh, in the streets. Uh, with, it's with not a gun? With the gun, and I was shooting and being shot at. At 15? At the age of 15. Now is is where uh, your mommy and daddy? Well, say? I'm glad you asked that. Mm. It's not that I came from a, a single parent home or broken home. Mm. My mother, she was the epitome of motherhood. Mm. My father, he was a stellar model of manhood and fatherhood. My f mother was the epitome of motherhood. Yes, I had the best mother in the history of the universe. I'm sorry. Yes. You, well, maybe You're supposed they were to feel that way. And yes. my daddy was pretty good too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm glad that okay. That's yes. Good. Well, so it was well not. Made. It was no shape, form, or fashion. A, a parental issue. It right. was myself. As I said, I was a wayward, out of control, crazy youth. Why? Uh, Why do you think? I mean, you're smart. Why do the you streets, think? The streets. Uh -huh. uh, the streets uh, held a, a lure over yeah. me. Okay. They, it was mesmerizing. Uh, when I was younger, the old heads, as we call them then, they're oh. called OGs today. These are the older elements of the underside of society, the criminals, the players, the con men. They call them uh, old heads? They call them old heads when I was growing up. They, they call, call them today OGs, which means original gangster. It's hard to keep up with. Yes, I understand. Okay, I understand. Thank but you for that. It's by good. I'm getting educated. Yeah. Yes. By the same the token, uh, they were... Uh, appealing but uh -huh. by the same token when I was growing up mm. the old heads mm. they would try to compel us to stay out of that particular life that they were in or uh, locked into they because would say, yeah don't yes, do they what would. I do just uh, do, yeah. from the the heroin addicts yeah. nodding on the corner they yeah. would tell us as they were in between nods mm. literally mm. don't mess with this you see they yeah. would use themselves as uh -huh. a teachable object uh -huh. but still it didn't work why well, again, yeah. uh, being youthful, yeah. you, yeah. as they say, you're young and dumb and full of uh, immaturity. Well, you got a lot of, they do that. I think it's built into all kinds of creeds. The young about that age, you're, in, you're trying sure. to push out and get sure. out and get out. You got to get true. out and under and all that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but not having the uh, spiritual guidance. Okay. That's where I fell short. And Didn't I, have that? Didn't have no, that in your life? Not to the degree that I needed it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I found it, as I stated, in the penitentiary or behind its walls mm -hmm. from uh, Mr. Al Dickens. So you were, you were, but you were you were at 15 you had a you had a uh, a, a gun yes uh -huh. where did you get it how did you get it why did you get it what what kind was it were you good with it or what or, well uh, uh, today did is you see, did you think of Wyatt Earp and shoot out at the OK Corral or what was the mindset well no it, 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 was, it, it uh, wasn't manhood. that uh, what were the issues in everything? well it was a, a, a multiple of those and mm. some that aren't listed mm. uh, again it was just trying to fit in and growing up on the streets of Newark mm -hmm. uh, you had to learn how to defend yourself you had to become part of a gang to protect yourself well we didn't call them gangs then. We, call we called them clubs. clubs. That's what we called them. We called them clubs. That's good PR. Yes, yeah, we, we called call them a clubs. Club rather than a gang. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a loaded term. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but uh, again, mm. uh, we must understand if mm. we look at the uh, uh, etymological uh, definition yeah. or history of gang, it yeah. comes from old English, gang are going. Does so, it, does it? Yes, it what does. does that mean, gang it means gang are going. It means a group are going. And go, the point gang. that we're making is uh -huh. that. All youth, hmm. once they reach a certain point, they hmm. become group conscious, and they should. Uh -huh. So therefore, conscious, yes, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And so therefore, they began to bond, and they began to uh, get a going as yeah. gang a going. Yeah, man now, bonding's big. Yeah, yeah. Where it, that particular gang mm -hmm. it heads or goals mm -hmm. is determined by those who are charged with making way for their future. Mm -hmm the adult element. Mm -hmm. And if they are on their job, the adult class, mm -hmm. then the gang's energy will be directed towards positive ends. Would that maybe involve political leaders or leaders in society, intellectual leaders, or just whatever leaders, uh, models or something well, like that that would be of an, a positive nature? Right. It yeah. is, it's no particular uh, title, yeah. but 
ones who meet the responsibilities and give the youth that wisdom and guidance mm -hmm. and model of example uh -huh. that they need at the time. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. And do you think that's socioeconomic tied in? We have different classes in yes. our society. Social, economic. There's more of a difficulty finding that if you're less economically advantaged than if you're better economically advantaged. Or what do you think it is among the social economic classes that exist within our society? Well. An world. inordinate number of people who yes. go to those uh, 2.0 million homes are either black or brown. Yes, they are. Now, that ain't right. I mean, no, there's something is. wrong with the statistic along those mm -hmm. lines, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Well, this is a, a legacy that stretches back centuries. Yes, it do. Uh, this is a, a legacy from slavery. Yeah, can you? And so yeah. when you dehumanize mm -hmm. uh, a certain segment of society, then mm -hmm. you can expect uh, nothing but negative retributions. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, Dr. Frankenstein trying mm -hmm. to blame Frankenstein mm -hmm. for his devastation and destruction poured upon society. Do you think there's some reason to understand you as a 15-year-old or anybody else like that having a sense of that inherited injustice that was mm -hmm. part of the condition you were supposed to mm -hmm. accept that informed your um, ability, let's call it uh, antisocial attitude towards mm -hmm. society? Sure. Yeah, sure. I would think so. Sure. You know, so I was born a wasp. Mm -hmm. And I mean, never, I never, did you ever have to have a fight, like when they have a fist fight? Mm -hmm. Did you ever have to have a fist fight? Oh, sure. Uh, plenty of fist fights, you see. see I never um, in all my life ever had a fight. Right. You see a John Wayne movie, and they go and they hit each other, mm -hmm. and then they fall down over the balcony and everything like that. You, I never had that in my life. Well, nothing, ever. nothing so dramatic, but brutal. But yeah, brutal. Not as fight. You have to uh, uh, choreographed in that fashion. And it got down to where you even had a gun. Yes. You have a knife. Well, you get a knife first, or then a gun, or how'd you get the gun? Well, I don't recall. All well, I knew is I uh, wanted to exercise violence upon anyone that I felt that I needed to. Uh huh. And did you feel you had to exercise violence in order to protect your manhood, or protect something really valuable to yourself, or something, or you just well, wanted to get over? Did you? What was your attitude? Do you want to get over? You want to get to be better than? someone did you want to do it for material gain did you want to gain better that, money so that you get a big car and girls or whatever what was well, motivating well no uh, that came later okay. the, the, the uh -huh. material aspect yeah. uh, when you're without the knowledge of self then you're without the knowledge of anyone else I think so yeah so uh, identity is really important it's only magnified mm -hmm. when you're youthful because you're going through hormonal changes oh, you're going terrible. to remember how horrible yes, it was yes. in a way it was just terrible yeah so you're trying to get a, a bearing and perspective on that wild horse called life mm. and yet you're unable to do so let uh, uh, not to mention trying to saddle it yeah. so uh, you began to go down any avenue that you think shows promise and nine times out of ten they will leave to dead end so oh. that was my state of existence what then. about education institutions church were you part of a church were there any groups were there institutions that would help uh what uh give direction to that kind of energy and everything you know what i'm sure, saying? sure sure uh, my father my yeah. father as yeah, i stated was, was an man, example yeah. uh he i remember and recall to this day that he would give a uh, bus rides every summer uh. for the whole neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, along with the lunches and everything mm -hmm. to keep us off the streets mm -hmm. so he did his part my mother did her part but Bus rides where? You know, uh, they would go ride? to like Lake Apac Con, oh, they Cheese would go Quake, to the and, country. right? You know, they would give us an escape from the the concrete and steel jungles mm -hmm. and all of the savagery that goes with it. The savagery. There was yes. savagery on the streets. Sure. Right? Were there were there territories like you have? Like if you got one group, I had a friend who grew up in East Harlem, right? Mm -hmm. in, uh, in the fifties, uh, 106 East, okay. and they, they they had territories. Like yes. there were the Italians, mm -hmm. and then they were there, and then there was somebody else, and then they would. And you know what they used to do, get over with humor? They used to have sound downs. And what they'd do is they'd have a guy who would come out, and, they, and if you had some guy who was like a boss or somebody, a, a tough guy, he would have somebody whose job was to get really funny mm -hmm. and say funny things about the other people and get over with humor and that kind of thing. Okay. They called them sound downs. That was maybe before your time. Yes. And I mean, but that's the way they used that violence. But there was violence between the various groups. And then if you got in the wrong territory at night, you were in trouble. You'd get beat up. Sure, sure. It's like the uh, example, uh, quintessential example of the, the Jets and the Sharks. That's the movie, right? Yes. The West Side Story. Yes, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. prime example. Like that. that was like that. What time, were you in Newark, did you say? Yes, I yeah, grew up Newark. in Newark, yes. Newark, they got a good mayor over there now, I yes. think, if I'm not mistaken. They're doing some good stuff over there. Yes. So it was hard. So how did you happen to get put in the uh, So a gun. Mm -hmm. That would have never occurred to me to have a, a gun. I mean, you uh, okay. 
Did a lot of people have guns? I mean, a, a, a gun that fired bullets? Well, the people that I, I was uh, associated with did. Were you in a group that was a major group? Did you walk big, like big um, heavyweight champions around and everything? No. Or no. Were, were you feared? Was no. it mafiosa kind of no. thing? Or what was it? You, know? you would, uh, in fact, you would never uh, suspect us as being the violent or murderous type. Because you walked in neat, you have good shoes, I Thank see. Thank you. You were very well natty, well dressed and everything like that. Thank you. You, but you had turmoil going in within your own makeup, your own sense sure. of lack of identity? Maybe? Yes, I was in a... a a nebulous state. I was a, a, a work still in progress. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, I didn't know any other way how to articulate and express myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, naturally, when you don't know how to articulate yourself uh, and, uh, from an intellectual standpoint, then the next best thing is savagery well, or a brutal uh, uh, state of existence. I guess that's probably been the lot of a lot of people. Yes. And it's not a very happy one. Did your mommy and daddy know you were having a peace? No. No, you had See, to that's keep the that thing. secret. Uh, yeah. I it, was, it wasn't like it was all in the family. Oh, no. I was a solid B, B-plus student. That's I was a good, good student. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Oh, yes. I, I, I've always enjoyed education. You've really well I've always enjoyed well studying. And you've always studied all your life, right? Yes. But, uh, again, mm. uh, my type of studying was sort of like uh, Carter G. Whitson in The Miseducation of the Negro, where he points out that yeah. uh, all people receive... Uh, according to the philosophers mm. who concede that we receive two educations in our lifetime, mm. one that is given to us mm. and one that we give ourselves, uh -huh. and that that second one is the most fulfilling, the most rewarding, but the one that we have to conquer is needs ourselves. I like that. Have you got that trademark, that term? I would like to put that on my website mm -hmm. because that's what they call an autodidact. That's a self-taught person. Yes, it is. You can teach yourself. Sure. And the, the institutions of the education are trying to get you to conform to societal norms. Well, that that are not yeah, worthy yeah. of conforming to very often because it has to do with being, you know, doing what you're told. Yes. It's sort of like akin to prison, sure. guards. Do you have to, have to do the military? No. I had to do the military. I didn't like it at all. I understand. I used to explain to the guy, the sergeants, that we could do things democratically, mm -hmm. and they didn't want to listen. You know, they oh, would yes. just say, "Here, see here, Private Hargrove." Yes. I didn't like the military at all. Yes. I didn't like the I, a structure. Some people say well, the people need structure. Right. You go in the military. I mean, if you go in prison, you got a lot of structure, right? Oh, uh, lots of structure. Okay, and you actually, you actually, by accident or something, uh, there was a, a death around something you did with the gun and everything. Well, there was a in the commission of a robbery. There was a shootout, and uh, someone that was there that was shooting at us was killed. Anyone else? Just the one person. Just the one person. And they, Man, they that's more you, than be, you were, you were thought to be guilty of that. Yes. Was there an exchange of fire? Oh yes, there Any were multiple. Any question rounds. in your mind that you were the one who did bring that man's life to an end? Well, I was uh, part and party and trying to. Mm -hmm. uh, Anybody else do time for it? Uh, yes. A bunch of you, or a number of you? A few of us. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that comes out of the violent thing, right? It yes, must have it been does. a huge shock to your family. Oh, it was, it was and to everyone around you. Yes, it and was to devastating. You. Yeah. Yes. Well, me myself again. Mm -hmm. I was still young and dumb. Young you and see, dumb. Uh, you think because dumb has to be dumb. Well, no. Uh, so? Age doesn't constitute maturity. I no. know young people that are mature beyond the ages, and I know people that are old enough to be my grandparents that are immature beyond the ages. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's yes. interesting. And that's getting around to some philosophy about Uncle Yaya, I yes. think. Mm -hmm. But you were in prison, and then you, you yeah. So um, can you remember the first day you had to go in? Does it burn <laughs> into your mind, oh, like yes, Shawshank Redemption or something like that? Uh, you sure. ever see the film? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, yes, good I film. Did. I yes, it is. It is good. And does it depict prisons? That was in the 40s or mm -hmm. something. But does it depict the attitude? You got guards that are sadistic and that kind of thing. And oh, what's well. it like in prison? Well, I've not had the experience. Yes, well, goodness. prison uh, is like a microcosm of the outside world. Everything that you have in prison, if you have the money, if you have the connections, then you can get it in prison. It's just that the dominant theme is brutality and a uh, predatory uh, type of state. Between the inmates and or including the, uh, the guards and so forth? All behind the wall. All behind the wall. And there's sadistic things among oh. guards and wardens and that kind of thing. And sure. those authority figures? Sure. There is. Sometimes the, the, the greatest
greatest brutality and, and, and uh, sadistic act is mm. by those who are charged with enforcing and upholding the laws of morality and, and the laws of the land. Like in the world at large. Sure. That is the Absolutely. case. I think the largest states and the most de devastating ones are the ones that are the most powerful. Sure. They are the worst and the authorities that can be in a bad state and that's something you learn. Then you have to learn to be self-protective. It was a uh, was it a big transformation when you were in prison than when you were out on the street? I mean, before? Well, the week a, before to when after you were sentenced, it was a big transition. Did you have to go through a huge epiphany or change in terms of your attitude in order to say, I got to go along with this situation that is, I can't walk down. You don't have your freedom to walk down the street or something like right. you did when you well, were Well, no. Uh, again, it was uh, somewhat of a seamless transition mm -hmm. in that, as I spoke previously, mm -hmm. the, the old heads, mm -hmm. the ones who oh, were yeah. professional uh, stick-up men, uh, killers, robbers, everything. You were thrown in amongst them. But they all knew me from the streets. They were all my teachers and mentors in the underside of life, the criminal been, element. You mean actually they had been in the part of Newark where you had actually sure. known them personally? Personally. So the whole gang. Right. Hey, so the, hell, the gang's right. all here. So when I came wall. into prison, it was pretty much an extension of the streets. Week. Yeah. Right. Without mm -hmm. uh, uh, the freedom of movement. And are the prison guards similar to the police in terms of the Newark police and everything that would have arrested you and put you through the court system, you know? Sure. Yeah, okay, it's a continuation mm -hmm. of continuation. that. Okay, well, I, I, the hell of it is, Robert, you're too mm -hmm. interesting. I could talk to you for hours. I can talk I to you. I know, we could talk for hours. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll have to do that over yes. coffee and everything. Mm -hmm. But we got to get on to Uncle Yaya, right? Okay. Yes. And to Al Dickens. You said you met him in prison. Maybe you could. Maybe it would be better if you talk about Uncle Yaya, or how do you want to wade into it? Al Dickens was a reporter, and we want to let the world know about this book that's being published, and the personage of Uncle Yaya. Okay. Well, so first, let's get to that, because you're too interesting. We've got to get off your story. Okay, now. thank okay. you. Well, first, let me give you an insight. Uh, Al Dickens is the author mm -hmm. of Uncle Yaya. Mm -hmm. Rudy Hawkins is one of the characters that he uses uh, to transport us through part of Uncle Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Now, what we have to understand is Yaya, uh, according to the Bible, means one whom the gates of hell will not prevail against. Uh -huh. In the Arabic language, it means John the Baptist. Really? In Espanol, it means that's it. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Dickens had explained to us when we were in prison how he came up with the spiritual entity. That's what Yahya is. Uncle Yahya is a spiritual entity mm -hmm. that Mr. Dickens uses to transport us through the pages of this wonderful philosophical jewel. Uncle Yahya was a person. Uncle Yaya is a spiritual entity. It is he a not character. A real no, Did I read not. the book wrong? No. You were in a summer camp somewhere in New Jersey, and there was a person, Uncle Yaya, I thought. No, this is a Maybe spiritual entity. Uh, let me explain. Okay, please do, because I got, I, I, well, I, there's well, too much many going people, on Many life. people do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Dickens. Yeah. He explained now, who how. who was he? This is Mr. Dickens, yeah. the author yeah. of Uncle Yaya. And was he, he in the prison? Writer. Did you see him in prison, or has he had experience I in did. prison? In my 12 years, I was able and blessed to spend three and a half years under his mentorship, under his spiritual guidance. In prison. In prison. Okay. In Trenton State Prison. All right, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Dickens, mm -hmm. by the way, it took him mm -hmm. over 13 years of accumulating the wisdom that is the tour de force, Uncle Yaya. Okay. And it took him about six months to write. But in the beginning, he made it clear that he would have these dreams mm. in which there was a nebulous figure. There was a figure in this dream that he could not define. He could not mm. uh, get the image right. out of his mind. Uh -huh. And as he began to exercise spiritually, that is through fasting and praying, yeah. he began to see a silhouette. And then eventually the picture in his dream in his mind became crystal clear mm. that Uncle Yaya was himself. So this is why he named this book Uncle Yaya as a spiritual well, entity. Okay, uh, it was months ago I read it when Wanda mm -hmm. he, and then I got busy. I'm mm -hmm. busy. There was a newspaper reporter. This yes. is reporting the narrative. Yes. And then he went to a place, a yes. camp in Jersey somewhere. That's right, Paradise uh, Gardens. And Al Dickens was that reporter. No, that's Rudy Hawkins. That's Rudy Hawkins. Who's Al Dickens? Then? He is the author of this book, Uncle Yaya. He's the author of the book, and right. so he's channeling Rudy Hawkins? Right. All Rudy of these Hawkins characters. Rudy Hawkins was the one that you were in touch with in prison? No. No. This is uh, Mr. Dickens. All is Mr. Dickens. All of these characters within Rudy the Hawkins, pages. A, right. a Rudy Hawkins, a fictional thing right. made up by Mr. Dickens. It's a fictional well, character like, uh, d d d you know. All of the characters Mr. Dickens actually knows. He, these are actual these individuals are right, that he actually knows in life 
and from experiences in life. Yeah. But he just uses them to convey our minds and understandings to the uh, point that he wants us to. So this thing about where he goes to a summer camp and there is Uncle Yaya in a house and all that, that's all made up? Yes, that's a, okay. That, okay, yes. it's like James Joyce. Or yes, oh, it's mm -hmm. like that. I, see, right. I read it so quick and everything, right. and it had all those things about with stories about animals and with, right. such wisdom wrapped up right. in it. Well, then I got it confused, and I thought there was a real summer camp and a real person. Well, no, that's in the workings. That's oh, in the workings. Oh, 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 okay. uh, well, as you mentioned, he yeah. uses animals. Uh, he uses He's, the, like uh, Aesop's fables. Right, Aesop's yeah. fables, and uh, who's uh, one of the most famous uh, sayings is "Physician first, heal thyself." Mm. So, Mr. Dickens is mm. a product of his own. Uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. He heals himself and mm -hmm. then he uses himself and holds himself up to society as an example of what you can do even in the darkest and the most uh, uh, seemingly uh, deep abyss of life that seems like you will never see the light of day or hope. Like you would get to or could get to in prison. Sure. Yeah. And you, you met in prison. Yes. And then you were under his tutorship as yes. it were. And the, Okay, well, I'm glad I got that story. I'm, so I'm embarrassed that I had misinterpreted it, reading it kind of quickly and no everything. Problem. But being, and it's a book you can't, I, uh, Wahida told me that, well, you're not going to be able to put it down. Yes. And she was quite literally true. It yes. One chapter to another to another was good writing, yes. really well done, and presented just oodles of wisdom. Yes, I've heard and people so say. And you, so you've been involved with this since inside prison. Then when did you first get in touch with him then? Well, like, as I said, I, I heard of Mr. Dickens, uh, from family members while I was uh, free in the streets. Before you went in? Yes, before I went to prison. Oh, he was one of the characters in the in the area? Or no, he, the he was incarcerated he was as well. Incarcerated yes, he was in prison. He was older? Yes, uh, okay. Mr. Dickens is uh, in his 70s. Okay, right, yes. okay. Uh -huh. So uh, I heard of him prior to Did going to prison. Did you know him before you went in? Well, I had heard of him. You had not visited him? No, I had He was a person in the community? No. He no. was imprisoned. Uh, oh, he was in prison. He was in prison before I was born. Oh, I see. Okay, yes. okay. But people knew of him. On the oh street. yes, oh yes. And they he knew him well as known. Uncle Yaya. He was what I had stated. One of he was like the godfather of the old heads. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Widely respected. Yes. And everything. And he had gone into prison for well, some he had, serious charge. He had gone well. He had gone to prison uh, for bank robbery. Uh, uh, the rumor was that uh, he and associates had robbed 100 banks, but he was only convicted of 18. Mm -hmm. uh, he was sentenced to 76 years in prison. Now, when you go through the prison system, you go through what is called classification, where okay. you are oriented into the prison culture. Okay. And you have a psychological evaluation. Uh, and in this particular segment yeah. of your in, uh, inception, yeah. you're labeled liber literally. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Dickens was labeled as dangerous, sociopathic, by who? schizophrenic. By the, by, by, the, by the authority? Yes, the psychiatric board. They, the psychiatrists are the ones who label whether or not you are uh, mentally unstable mm -hmm. to be uh, assigned Do they put uh, you medication. through a rigorous test or testing or time long of psycho? Woody Allen tried to do psychoanalysis for 16 years and still mm -hmm. couldn't get at the basic problems roiling his soul. You know well, I mean? no. Uh, I mean, how deep can they get into an individual? It's a very complex thing. Yes, well, uh, that would cost money, that would cost resources, and we're not they're worth not it. They're not putting much resources. So they're not. They don't put much resource. Uh, uh, should people. you prove to be yeah. a subject uh, uh, worth to them, then yeah. they will make the necessary investments. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, uh, they will not had, go that far. I had a friend of mine who was a jazz musician, great friend. He's still there and everything like that. And he was valedictorian of his high school class. Mm -hmm. And uh, the day of the, he gave the valedictorian uh, address, and then he and another kid, one of which was only 14, they went out and robbed a bank. <laughs> yes, sir. Valedictorian. They went and robbed a bank, and the kid driving the car, he was only 14. He could hardly see over the steering wheel. Yes. And they, uh, they got away. They got... Um, they got away for a while, and then they got caught and had to go to prison. And yes. he was—he was in for bank robbery. They mm -hmm. were robbed. It was a a, a youthful prank, right, you, well, know, yes. you know, and everything. And uh, and he went in. But in the hierarchy within the prison, he said the bank robbers are the top, mm -hmm. most respected. The people like Willie Sutton—that's where the money is. Go rob the system. Mm -hmm. Go rob. Get away with. It. If you can get over on the system, that's fine. And you rob a bank, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, you know, child molesting or rape or some sort of thing like that, then there's a hierarchy among the people within sure. the prison. Is that true? Well, sure. That there's, there's respect for the bank robbers. Right, well, they, the as they say. The can rob the rich. Right, there's Robin there's, Hood. Oh, sure. Right. So to speak. Yeah, there's, there's, that's in the normal uh, thinking of uh, the world. Yeah, well, there's honor, as they say, even among thieves. 
Well, um, yeah, but it's better if you're thieving somebody who's very well. It, uh, Robin Hood was a great uh, thing where you go and rob from the rich and mm -hmm. give to the poor. True. That's what a lot of revolutionary things are about, don't you think? Of course. I mean, that's something that makes sense, don't sure. you? Sure. In you, a way, if, you know? if you name the revolution, then you, I'm sure you can find banks that were robbed for the cause. Right. But the thing is, he said in the prison that, that the ones who were the bank robbers were the most respected. Well, you have the, 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 the ones who are incarcerated for murder, for armed robbery, such as establishments, banks, what have you. There is a hierarchy, and then there's a, a lower status. If you could rob a bank and get away with it and get away clean, that would be the most respected thing you could do, I think. Well, in, in most people, Is there anything better? If you could, if you could uh, outwit, like in Shawshank Redemption. Remember right. the guy in Shawshank? He was a prisoner, and they mm -hmm. were the, the authorities were all evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were all uh, criminal, yes, they and were. they were stealing and everything like that, and he got over on them, mm -hmm. and he beat them. Sure. So that would be something that would be respected, because authority is not well respected. No. I would think, because well, authority is so abusive sure. in terms of treating your people. Well, as Uncle Yaya says, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uncle Yaya says that unity comes through leadership. Mm -hmm. When the people are under good leadership, they are joyful. When they're under bad leadership, they, they mourn. Well, you uh, were under some pretty bad, I'm speaking mm -hmm. for people of the black persuasion, you were under mm -hmm. some pretty bad leadership when you had Simon Legree. Oh, sure. And slave masters. Oh, what? sure. I can't believe slaves. Sure. Chattel slaves for crying out loud. Absolutely. Fugitive slave acts. I mean, how in the hell? I'm sorry. No you know what I'm saying. I understand exactly okay. what you're yeah. saying. All right. Yes. Sure. Mm. But uh, by the by the same token, the worst thing that you can do is rob a poor man. So yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. But it's different robbing a rich man. Of oh, absolutely. Especially yeah. if the rich man is worthy of, of such, as it like says. Like Madoff. Sure. Yeah. Madoff. Madoff with all that money and it, you yes, know he, he did. He, and he, you, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. So justice. Uh, somewhere said. Uh, let's see. James Joyce, a famous poet, said, um, "History is a nightmare of injustice, mm -hmm. from which we're attempting to awaken." Because it's always been unjust. You have a few people who own everything. They have all the control. All things are set by these authority figures. And everybody else are like serfs on a feudal estate at the order of the Lord mm -hmm. to do what they're told in order for them, Lord, to get richer and more abusive of the people. Sure. So there's never been justice. No. So if you don't have universal justice, something we'd want to go toward, you're going to have people who are going to have naturally a rebellious idea about the people who are administering the administrative structures that are inherently unjust. Sure. And we live in that kind of a world. Yes. Well, Uncle Yaya says mm. that uh, whether you are a king or, or, or a pauper, mm. uh, we are all subject to the divine law of justice, which is cause and effect. You reap mm -hmm. what you sow. And everything happens on time and in time. As Ecclesiastes points out, there's a time and season for everything under the heavens. Yeah. So there's a time and season for universal judgment to be meted out. To the, the you think that time is yet to come? Oh, these are without a doubt. Are these the end date days? Sure, now? as Uncle Yahya indicates. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of the signs, symbols, mm -hmm. and representations that the prophets, the wise men, the sages, the mm -hmm. savants, all mm -hmm. of them have depicted are in live and living color today. Mm -hmm. But uh, the powers to be, when truth speaks to power, and mm -hmm. the power is the problem, mm -hmm. naturally they have to get their spin masters and their sofas to paint a bad picture. And of they got truth. a lot of people, if somebody's a lord, they got a lot of people who want to be sycophant to them because he might get more meat. Sure. You know, you get, you get so rewarded by being sure. sycophant to the. Well. To the, to the leader who is unjust. Yeah, well, as Uncle mm -hmm. Yaya points out again, mm -hmm. man does not come to power by what's in his pocket, mm -hmm. for a fool and his money are soon parted. Mm -hmm. He comes to power by what in, is in his head. So the world is universally recognized and known to be divided between those who know and those who know not. Those who know and do not, or is it between those who have and have not? Well, what about the have and have not well, thing? Because it seems to me those people that live in those castles usually have a lot. Sure. You notice they all live in great I'm houses, sure. beautiful things, and other people don't well, got enough. Uh, uh, you know what knowing, I'm saying? The yes. have and have not is important in a sure. materialistic sense. Knowing is think? akin to having, and not knowing is akin to not having. Well, then that would mean all the rich guys who have all the money and have stolen it all, or whatever they've done, and have invaded countries, killed people and gotten all the grain from the other tribe to make their tribe strong. They are living in the hill. They're living great. Sure. So they, that's knowledge? 
Oh, sure. Well, you don't want to associate that with that. It's ill-gotten oh. gain, is it not? Oh, yes. It's well, how do we deal with ill-gotten gain by all the le so-called sure. leaders of the world? Right. It's ill-gotten gains mm. by uh, knowledge that was used for evil and criminal purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, see, there's, as Uncle Yaya says, nothing is good oh, or bad. We're talking, when you say Uncle Yaya, we're talking about Mr. Dickens. I'm talking so about... about this, who are we right. talking about? I'm talking mm. about the content mm. of the book. Uh -huh. When I say Uncle Yaya, mm. I'm referring to the content of the book okay. of which Mr. Dickens is the author. He, and he points out that uh, nothing is good or bad until man gets his hands on it. Mm -hmm. This goes to uh, usurping or, or commandeering grain mm -hmm. for illicit purposes. Yes, as you can. Expropriating is sure. another term they use. Yes, stealing. absolutely. Stealing by any Happens other name all the time. is stealing. And yes. at the level of a gun. No wonder people think you ought to be able to get a gun because that's what the nations do. They kill sure. one another and everything, don't they? Sure, yeah, they're prime okay. examples. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a lot of uh, wisdom in this and that. And you think of coming to uh, Uncle Yaya and a lot of things do that a lot of people think we're coming to a time of qualitative transformation in the evolution of universal consciousness. Sure. We're coming to an end time. Sure. We have weapon systems now, I think, Robert. I'm mm -hmm. not sure, but it's modeled that the weapon systems that exist, and it's the weapon systems that are supported by one gang or one nation, mm -hmm. leaders, to get an advantage over another nation so that they've got a Gatling gun and the others only have muskets. So they can go with the Gatling gun and steal the grain from the other one and become stronger. Sure. And that's real politic, or a lot of what's thought of as real politic. They can do that. But those weapon systems have now gotten to be so powerful that they apparently, if they were unleashed, would mean it would kill every single human being on the planet. Do you think that's possibly true, that their species lethal? Oh, sure. They Absolutely. weren't in the Second World War. Sure. As recently as the Second World War, we were impotent. No, we were, we were, you know, we were not able to do that. Sure. We couldn't kill off the whole species. Right. Almost. Do you understand? Do you ever Absolutely. think like that? You yes. Think well, we've crossed an existential significant line in the evolution of our capabilities to destroy each other. Yes. So this is why we must have a universal judgment, because if man is left to go on mm -hmm. in his destructive, brutal, unjust way, mm -hmm. then we will be uh, extinct as a people. Uh, America has boasted that she can destroy the population of the earth 30 times over and still uh, have in her possession nuclear uh, arsenal. Uh, America is the only country in the history of nuclear technology mm -hmm. and science mm -hmm. to drop two nuclear devices on a people. Yeah, but when we did that, we were still impotent. It's like you're gestating, you're impotent. You know, sure. you're coming to a thing. But we were still big boy. Sure. That, that You know that the fire, if I may, historically, mm -hmm. the fire, the big boy, the first atomic weapon, they weren't even sure it was going to go off yes. and everything. They only had two. Mm -hmm. And the firebombing that took place, firebombing is horrible. The firebombing of Tokyo, with they had total control over the air. You get to be the power. You can do whatever you want with those people sure. and you demonize them. You turn them into just all and they went to the firebomb and killed far more people than the atomic bomb. Did. Sure. So we were in a certain sense still protected in our incompetency mm -hmm. in terms of that. We've now come over from that. It was about 1970. It got to be where the weapons were then of a nature that if they're set off they would have to be the weapons of the United States, some sort of miscalculation or mm -hmm. something. If they were set off, it would mean, because there's germ things too, and there's wave things that are developing sure. out of black ops. They're always mm -hmm. trying to get an advantage sure. to get, so they could steal right. or get control mm -hmm. and everything. That if they were to be set off, it would mean the end of the entire species around 1970. Well, sure. That now, was that's also a major existential new reality against 200,000 years of our existence. We've been sure. here 200,000 years. Well, so this is a time of qualitative transformation at the level of capability on the destructive side. Oh, absolutely. You see that? Is yes. that something that resonates with Uncle Yaya? Oh, yeah. Well, Uncle Yaya, yeah. uh, in the uh, section where he speaks about a uh, personal code, he mm -hmm. speaks about uh, a particular image or a personage called the misfit. Okay. And he points out that the misfit is the one who becomes bored with what is common and ordinary. Mm -hmm. And because of their lack of conformity mm -hmm. to what is normal, they are labeled a uh, madman, they mm -hmm. are labeled savior, they are labeled demon, or all three. Mm -hmm. And he points out that in order to be labeled a misfit, mm -hmm. you must be dissatisfied with the rules and laws of society. Well, okay. yes. Now the misfit, uh I'm dissatisfied with a lot of the rules oh, sure. of the society. I was very dissatisfied. It would have been with the Fugitive Slave Act mm -hmm. and the existence of slavery and the women couldn't vote and all the rest of the serfdom and things that went along with the nightmare of history. Sure. Does that make you a misfit in terms of some universal 
principles or something? Well, I if think you Jesus, stand. Jesus was a misfit. Robin Hood was a oh, misfit. Yes. Right? Yes. All George the Washington was a misfit. Yes. No, I'm, so I'm trying to understand. A misfit that is. Well, misfit, you, know, you have, uh, you would have, you have as many ways to see a misfit as you have people to see it. Okay. Uh, in this regard, I am talking about moral misfits. Okay. I'm well, talking about uh, misfits that, as you have Hitler. spoken of, as being uh, those who have acquired what they have by uh, ill-gotten gains. Most of them have. Yes. Now, Most and, of them have. Sure. And in okay. particular, uh, it goes to in the Bible Habakkuk where it says, uh, woe to the town built upon blood mm. and the city built upon iniquity. Uh -huh. Now, that is a prototypical example mm. of America itself. Mm. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, at the same time, those who stand up and rear their heads in opposition to them, mm -hmm. they are classified just as that. Mm. Misfits. And, and the misfit, according to the wise men, mm. they go through three stages before they reach fruition or growth mm -hmm. and that the first one is the beast of burden okay. where they where they okay. totally fight against or uh, have no use or no desire for the rules and laws of society right. and then there's uh, uh, the the uh, uh, lion mm -hmm. who fights who fights vigorously yeah. and, and, and determined uh -huh. to keep any kind of conformity by society's dictates off of them Not which to... gives birth to the child who is like an open book ready for guidance okay. so yeah. in this token you have many people at that state uh -huh. and the youth mm -hmm. are a prime example and yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Dickens had wanted me to point out yeah. that his greatest desire mm. is to help fallen humanity mm. in particular to impart spirituality mm -hmm. to our youth mm -hmm. because our youth to keep a nation going, mm. they are the ones who take our place tomorrow as the leaders and teachers. Right. So they should be better qualified than mm. we are mm. to take our place tomorrow. Right. So right. they are lacking the most important element of that task at hand, mm. spirituality. Mm. Uh, as Dick Gregory said in No More Lies, he said that colleges and universities are far uh, out of orientation with nature. Mm. They teach indoctrination instead of education. And the he points out. The whole educational process sure. does, doesn't it? Yes, it's, and he it's, points it's out. It's equipping people to be answerable to an authority figure, sure. like a teacher or a prison guard. Sure. Or a president. Yes. Okay. And he points out mm -hmm. that indoctrination is forcing knowledge in and education is bringing wisdom out. Okay. And, and he makes education it clear. Education literally is draw sure. it Latin. It means and to draw out. Yes, yes, and he makes it clear that education teaches us how to live and knowledge teaches us how to make a living and that when he was in college yeah. that they were so busy learning how to make a living yeah. that they forgot how to live and uh -huh. this goes to the very youth today yeah. they're sitting there like open books willing to be taught mm -hmm. but since uh the adult class are so irresponsible uh -huh. and bankrupt mm -hmm. in their duties mm -hmm. they see that well i have to fend for myself and yes. naturally when uh -huh. you fend for yourselves mm -hmm. naturally you're going to make mistakes in the process mm -hmm. of learning mm -hmm. your certainties by your uncertainties right, right, so right. this mm -hmm. is the state of of youth today and this is a whole world of misfits i don't know if it's of only the youth it might be the youth always is sure. youth is doing that and everything but it's also a good deal of the world at large oh, and it's sure. very dangerous very sure. dangerous to have things without vision. People perish somewhere. It says in one of them good books. Sure. I don't know which one. That's true. You're you know right. what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Yeah, okay. So it's a really. It's got a spiritual message. Oh yes. And Dickens does. Yes. And the Dickens. Yes. Well, everything he uh, states in here, he points out. He does not deal with the material or the physical side no. of life. He deals with the spiritual. And he uses animals. Oh like sure. Is well, one of those stories are great about the toad and the something or something. Sure. I can't remember in the. Yeah, it, it, well, it, 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 it's it's a book of wisdom. Oh, As absolutely. As with 21st century man, with Dickens, we had um, Charles Dickens. Oh, yes. Described another time of great inequity yeah, in the world. Yeah, they were the best of times, not? the worst yeah. of times, right. yes. Okay, but, okay, but t yeah, talk about the way the book is structured, maybe. And well, like uh, in essence, mm. the, the heart and the nucleus of it is mm. the manuscripts, which mm. speaks to society, religion, identity, mm. and it's chock full of pearls called the wisdom of Uncle Yaya. Okay. Now, he points out that you may ask, well, why do you use society, religion, and identity mm. in that order? He mm. said, and his very good answer is there's no reason why as long as you get these particular truths. That's right. And he points out that it's very important that we understand these particular elements of right. wisdom uh -huh. because they are stepping stones to learning society's rules and laws and focusing on yourself and how you relate to society and the world mm -hmm. and able to achieve your goals without offending societies, how to ascend the ladder of society's religion and other uh, institutions 
and become what you want without offending society. Without offending society. Yes. So that would be Robin Hood who would be polite to King John who was stealing everything. Is that the idea? Or, well, is, it, or is the world going to mature to where justice will be able to rain down? Well, sure. That's, it will? That's because never it never has. Right? Oh, no. It wasn't yeah. supposed to until this okay. day and time. Okay. If, you, okay. if you look uh -huh. at all of the, the great ones, the Muhammad's, the Jesus, the uh, Moses's, the Buddha's, all yeah, of can. them, yes, were wave makers. Mm -hmm. See, uh, we can't get out of the life cycle of here today, gone tomorrow, as mm -hmm. Uncle Yaya says. Mm -hmm. So when they realized and recognized that they were just like everyone else, mm -hmm. then they vowed to be what they are, perfect mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. and make tidal waves. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're at today. And mm -hmm. all of them prophesized mm -hmm. and predicted, and the time bears witness, that there would come a time called the last days mm -hmm. where a universal judgment would march around the planet, uh, meeting out its just rewards to all concerned. Well, you get very different kinds of interpretation. You got all these last days things by the oh, evangelical sure. Christians. They think there's only going to be 144,000 left. After sure. the retribution of the well, Armageddon, they got all kinds of crazy stories, yes. right? Armageddon well, type stuff. Everybody well, has they all their, have their own same. thing, and they've all got their own interpretation of the final days and sure. all. Sure, but we do live. That's what I was getting to when the fact that you get to the point materialistic within a dialectic, mm -hmm. not within spiritual. Right. But there's there, and that we've reached a point of qualitative. Two hundred thousand years we've been here. We're all out of Africa. Two hundred thousand years. The whole species. That's when we got started. Ten thousand generations. This generation is the defining generation, and whether or not this hominoid line of consciousness is going to continue in this universe or not. Oh, is yes. what I'm saying. It definitely has. It definitely has all the category or the categorizations that make this a definitive moment in the evolution of universal consciousness. Does it not? Oh, sure. Well, you could have lived 100 years ago, and you're still climbing up Mount Sisyphus. Sure. You know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So it's a, pl it's a privilege to be alive at this particular oh, yes moment. Oh, yes, it is, at this juncture in the time. Uh, evolution of universal uh, patterns of material organization and consciousness. Well, right? sure. But well, it's see? also very, very difficult. Right. And you've got a lot of crazy interpretations of what that end time is going to be like. Because well, so many people want to think they're right and everybody else is wrong. Sure. Out of history. Sure. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Uncle Yaya is a voice of wisdom that can help bring some wisdom to that in a comprehensive kind of way that oh, might sure. be inclusive of everybody? Does he see a, a fiery end for all the injustice and that kind of thing? Or what does Uncle Yaya say about the out, likely outcome of this crazy important moment in the evolution of events well, comprehensively? It goes to exactly what the prophet said, okay. uh, a meeting out of justice. Mm -hmm. And justice in the manner that will remove once and for all the foundation of those mischief makers and blood shedders mm -hmm. that have delighted themselves for thousands of years in creating chaos, war, and suffering for those who were party to such and those who were unwilling participants. Have you watched the news lately, bro? Oh, it's a horror do show. Do you watch the news? Uh, every, you watch day. The news? every day. Every day. Do you do it with it? It's still OK. Uh, how do we deal with the reality. I mean, there doesn't seem to be vision outside of certain. We have the traditional visions of the good book, Jesus, mm -hmm. Muhammad, the Vedic, mm -hmm. Uncle Yahya. We have some of the spiritual, sure. but the, the reality seems to be just um, not exactly what he's predicting or will it come all at once? What's, what, what, what's the projection? You know? Well, as uh, Mr. Dickens points out, Mm. Uh, everything is on time and is that end time. His real name? Dickens? Yes, it is, Mr. Dickens. Like Charles Dickens. It's like Charles Dickens. Everything, no relation. Mm, well, uh, it was spiritually. Yes, yeah, spiritually yeah, yeah, right, speaking. Right, yes, right, 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 right. Well, uh, we we have to uh, realize, as Mr. Dickens says, everything happens on time and end time. Mm. Uh, uh, as, as Wayne Chandler speaks in his uh, ancient future, that mm. that which we call luck, chance, mm. hope, guess, mm. are all names for laws not yet recognized. So you see, uh -huh. this chaotic uh, state of existence mm -hmm. is by design, because out of this chaos will come order, just as the uh, astronomers and astrophysicists point out the chaotic state of the uh, so-called Big Bang and they're starting to rethink that as well. Well, in the end, what do you mean they're, re they're beginning to see that uh, that what we call the universe is something that is now been produced from something as small as what they would call a classify as an egg, more so than a Big Bang. Well, okay, I don't quite understand that. Super string theory, super, or they, you know, the CERN thing, the, mm -hmm. the, the yes. accelerator. Yes, accelerator. We've got, we, they have a picture of the shock wave. 200,000 years we've been here. 
you know, Australopithecine could not have even contemplated it, or much less mastodons or something. But we, the, the, the shock wave of the Big Bang, it was 13.8 billion years ago that there was an event. And they've got photograph of the shock wave only 200,000 years after that occurrence mm -hmm. from, the, from the W uh, satellite array and everything. And the CERN thing is going to bring us a picture of the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago when it gets fired up, they've had trouble with it. The one in France and Germany, but it's going to be within a nanosecond of the Big Bang occurrence 13.8 billion years ago. But the mathematics of string theory is that this may be one of many universes, multi-universe. The mathematics of string theory is that there may be multi-universes that are there connected by wormhole. So there's still mystery. In oh, yes, world. I'm aware of that, uh, and the dark matter as well. Yeah, a lot of that, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, but, but the thing is, it's a, uh, I mean, if you think of a, a dinosaur, he could not have taken the measure of things. You know, and, it could be, and the purpose of consciousness is to move across. A biological evolution is, a bi is moving across entropy, or the second law of thermodynamics, moving toward the limits of chaos to the limits of a closed system, moving across and bringing increased conscious pattern of understanding. And then you get to a point where, like in, in evolution, you get to a point where you have steady state, and then there's a quickening, and then there is punctuated equilibrium, and the new appears. Sure. So we well, may be at the moment of coming into the new relationship oh, to, the, to, the, to the universe which we're privileged to live in that time. And this book would be giving us some wisdom to get through the labor pains, Oh, maybe? sure, Are sure. we going through labor pains Oh, these now? are no question oh, where is labor is it? How far off is it before this is going to happen? Well, when we're, happen? Could it happen tomorrow? We're in the place center now. We're in we the are, birth canal we, now. We are in the, thank you. Okay, yes. we've been in the womb for a long time. Oh, yes, yes. Well, well we're, now we're coming to a time of like we're about to leave, the, and we can't know outside. Right. If you're in the womb, or if you're in the birth canal, you can't know what it is outside. Sure. So all the projections about what it is spiritually and gods and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. is all stuff that we can take for wisdom, but we don't know what that's going to be because it's synergetic. It's oh, well. behavior systems unpredicted by, we don't know what that's going to be. Sure. You know, we think we're going to uh, try and project it. We've tried to, to get a right. sense of you know, self-reflective consciousness. It goes to what Jesus said that, uh, that which comes in the hereafter, that which comes in the new world from mm. this world mm. is that which no eye has seen, no uh, uh, heart has conceived, mm -hmm. and no mind has thought of. Yeah, so therefore, naturally, uh, uh, your uh, analogy to uh, what is to come while in the birth canal uh, is, is unforeseen. But yeah, but a lot of people try to project what that oh, is like, sure. that whole well, year, but that's what a lot of the religions are doing. They say, oh, sure. the Vedic say there was consciousness before there was material, mm -hmm. and they made all these projections, but it's done, we haven't known. We've, we've well, been in ignorance. Yes, well, we're going to have knowledge, right? Oh, well. Of it in a very elevated way. It'll be oh, like elevated from way. where we have been. In a godly way. Uh, uh -huh. as, as Uncle Yaya says, what is mm -hmm. original, the thing thought of or the thing made? Mm -hmm. Even when you're acting in a so-called unconscious state, mm -hmm. You're thinking on a subconscious level. Yeah. You're, you're activating thought because, mm -hmm. as the Book of Knowledge says, knowledge is a prerequisite to work. So you're thinking, and you're thinking in terms to know mm -hmm. uh, so that you can be certain about your actions and uh, erase uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, uh, Uncle Yaya in a nutshell. He mm -hmm. is pointing out that everything is just as the prophets, the wise people, the scientists have stated it would be. They will be neither this nor that until we say what it is. And those or that one that has the power and force to make it be is what we would call the supreme being or God in our midst. Mm. Uh, and God, by definition, being power and force. Mm -hmm. And as uh, another wise man said, that we say wisdom, power, force. Mm -hmm. There is no power or force of power until there's wisdom to produce it. Mm -hmm. So the one who was able to do this mm -hmm. is the one who was able to pinpoint how long we've been here on the scene in time, when we came on the scene, where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going. Well, evolution gives a pretty good picture of that. I don't yes. think there's any doubt of that. It's 200,000 years we've been here, the species. Well. And, uh, but it's also a synergistic universe. And synergies, the behavioral systems, unpredicted by the sun 
of the parts. Sure. There's something more than the sum of the parts of, let's say, a liberated human. The destructive capability of the weapon system is offset by an ability to take care of everybody within an ecological context that's not been characteristic of history. It's equally significant existentially to the liberation of the human society, where everybody can realize their own worth within a, which has never existed. And so we got the liberation is at hand as part of that. But there is the possibility that in terms of the universe, maybe we were meant to just destroy ourselves. It could be. We can't close that. There's nothing certain that we're going to make it. We may not make it. We may blow up the whole thing because we got that capability. Or we're either going to annihilate or we're going to liberate the human society within an ecological context and bring in a new relationship to the cosmos. And that's the time we're privileged to be alive and participate in. Sure. And, and it's good to have Uncle Yaya with all the stories about the animals and things, mm -hmm. because he brings wisdom to that. Sure, he Are you optimistic order. for the human prospect? Oh, absolutely. You are. I'm oh, not. I cannot absolutely. be optimistic well, about anything. Well, I can understand your because, sentiments. No, because it, it's too easy to be Pollyannishly optimistic, or oh, everything's going to be okay. Oh, no, not now. Because uh, I just see an awful lot of injustice mm -hmm. and inappropriate and lack of vision among our so-called leadership, don't mm -hmm. you? Oh, sure. I think maybe we'd do well to repair to some of the wisdom of uh, Mr. Jenkins and uh, Mr. Dickens and the Uncle Yaya. What do you think? Oh, sure. I think we could gain wisdom from this book that's relevant to the material world and the political problems and we're, we're well, running no, mankind. No question we will. Uh, everything has a time and season. Jesus, even though he had the wisdom mm. to universal salvation and liberation, there was a point in his maturation period mm -hmm. where someone had to change his diapers, mm -hmm. someone had to clean his nose, someone mm -hmm. had to nourish him mm -hmm. to the point mm -hmm. that he could exercise his responsibility mm -hmm. to uh, humankind. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same today. Mm -hmm. In this chaotic uh, uh, setting that we call today, there is a uh, good work behind the scenes that has been going on for a time. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Yaya is trying to open our eyes mm -hmm. to this particular aspect. Now, is this Christian? Does it nest with Christianity? Does it nest with Islam? Is this part of the nation of Islam? Is this part of the traditional religious, spiritual traditions? Is it Vedic? Is it uh, Indian? Is it there? Or is it something that stands alone? Well, the vision of Mr. Uh, Dickens and uh, it's Yaya. It's all of those and more. It's, all of it's, those it's, and more. That's synergy, brother. Yes, yeah. because if you look into his pages and mm -hmm. then you look at the source of his wisdom, mm -hmm. you will see Islam, you will see Christianity, you will see Buddhism, you will see uh, uh, many of the Eastern religions, you will see uh, many of the attributes and of wisdom of, over time. Much of it's told through stories like Aesop with animals. Sure. That are very clever because they bring great messages. Well, it's us. also yeah. for another purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Dickens points out, and this holds true in mm -hmm. the human condition, there's not too many of us that accept criticism, even if it's constructive. Yeah. So uh, you use a, a, a vicarious vehicle, mm. in this case the animals of Aesop's fable, mm. uh, Lukman's fables, mm -hmm. and to convey these uh, lessons that are to be taken to heart and will be taken to heart much easily if they're directed at you uh, uh, personally. So they encompass and do and go along with the better parts of the good books sure. that have come to us from the sure. wisdom schools over the long haul. It's like uh, getting mm -hmm. the, the, the prime cut the of a cut. particular <laughs> uh, uh, side of beef, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you know, you, the filet mignon. Of, all of, oh, of course. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, yeah. truth is truth. Yeah, right. Truth stands for itself and represents itself. Truth mm -hmm. doesn't need any of us mm -hmm. to uphold it. So the truth and the divinity of it will spell itself out on time and in time. I just want to say we ought to run the credits, I think, because we want to let the people know about how they can get the book. And we, yes. uh, people are, the book is available. Yes, it and is. And we'll be in touch with Wahida and everything to yes. get uh, that. Is it, it is. in the stores and so forth? Well, right or now. did you get a, a Google thing? Is it up on your? Uh, it's available at uh, uh, W. Clark Publishing. Mm -hmm. Uh, dot com, mm -hmm. and it's available at Amazon.com. It is at, on yes. Amazon. Right? Yes, for. And it's out in the bookstore? Yes, all bookstores. Book okay, it's called Uncle Yaya, 21st Century Man of Wisdom by this fellow Al Dickens. And there was an Uncle Yaya that I've we, we've given you a little bit of rundown here on this because I got confused. Yes. It's a lot of wisdom wrapped yes, up in that book. And it's very hard to put down once you start into reading it, isn't it? Yes, yes yeah, it I is. I guess you agree with that. Well, yes. Listen, thank yes. you very much, Appreciate Robert. It. So thank good you. to talk to you. Your pleasure to have the perceptions. Robert Pearson, Chief Representative.